Hey what's up guys, back again with another video in the Node.js and Express series. This episode I'm going to show you how to access IDs from your documents in MongoDB databases and then uh, take that ID and then get data from the documents from that ID. Alright guys, so what I'm going to do is show you how to um, get the ID for a document um, for the game that you want to um, get it from. So basically if we go back to the MLab, we can see that each document has its own ID, right? It's very unique for each uh, document, right? So what we can do here is access the ID when we need it, like just supply the ID, and then with this ID we can access all of this data, okay? So if you're wondering what I mean with an example, so we can if we go back here for example, um, right here whenever we're trying to access the game page right where we display the game and size it and everything like that what we're doing here is really actually kind of stupid if you think about it okay so basically what we're doing here is we're sending all of this information through the URL to this route okay which um, theoretically I mean it works it makes sense kinda but it's actually really stupid compared to the system that we can have okay because what we can do here is actually just do this we can take it and just supply one inf piece of information, just the ID, okay? And with that single piece of information, we can gather the ID and then take the ID and then search for all documents matching that ID, of course. And every ID is going to be unique, right? So we're going to find one document matching that ID, uh, that ID, and then we can take that data and then send it from the ID, from the MongoDB data that we retrieve, right? So basically what I'm trying to say is we don't have to access the data for our game every time we send uh, the slash game route, okay, or whatever. Basically, we don't have to send it all through the route, okay? We don't have to send it as route parameters. We can simply we can simply provide one ID and then get all the information we need, okay? And it's a much smarter system too. Like, I mean, well, that's why it's a smarter system. But on top of that, let's say we're sending some sensitive information through the uh, the URL. That's obviously bad because then anyone could just look inside the URL and then see that information. Um, I can't think of any examples for that, but you know, it's still kind of stupid, you know. Maybe it's a password or something like that, right? We don't want to show that in the URL, right? So it's better to just provide an ID and then behind the scenes in our engine here, our piece of code here, we're going to get that ID and then search for the data when we need it, only when we need it, and then display it to the page, okay? So it's just a much better system, and so we're going to use that uh, theory or idea to actually make a better system of our code, okay? So currently, what we're doing here, if we go to the, let's see here, reload here, and we go to the games page, Oh, we're already on it. If we click play game, it's going to take us to this specific URL, right? With all this data that's passing to it, right? Well, like I said, it's not a smart system, so we want to reform it, I guess you could say. So basically what we need to do is instead passing all this data, we want to pass this ID here because I already changed it. Now it only wants an ID as a route param, right? So we need to go, so what we need to do is do, uh, so what we need to do is go to our game page or another list page and then change this here to just have slash game and then slash the ID so we can just do ID just like that so now what this will do is every time we click a button it's going to get the ID for that button that we just clicked you know for that game and then send it with this route here as a route parameter okay so if we reload here and click play game it's not going to do, it's now going to do slash game slash and then the name of the ID so it's all you know perfect now right well not quite actually because we haven't done anything yet so now um, now that we're sending the ID with the route we can go to the route right here and then access this ID. So let's actually store this ID as a variable for now. So we'll do var ID is equal to rec.params.id, okay? Because that's that's of course how you access you know a route parameter. So now what we can do, we can take this a step further and access the information that we need to send here, right? Because this is no longer possible. We cannot access the route parameter of title creator with height and file name because it's now it's no longer sent with the route anymore, okay? So we need to access this, uh, access this data through the find function of the games collection. So if we do game.find, now we need to find an ID, right? So we could do it like this. So we could do find and then ID, just provide the ID that you want to find, okay? And then the next thing is going to be your function, your callback function. So it's going to be error and then uh, data, or we could just do found game. So the game that was found, name it whatever you want, it doesn't matter. So we open that up. Let's make this better open that up just like this and of course check and see if there's an error if error console.log cons uh, find game with that ID okay 
but that's a possible situation sometimes if they type the wrong if they, for example they change the id in the url and press enter maybe that'll happen okay so anyway so let's say it goes it, um, everything goes smoothly then what we want to do is actually take that data and then send it to that route page okay so the the page of the route the game page game.ejs okay so likewise like i said before um, we cannot access from the route parameters anymore so what we want to do here is do found game dot title because that will be where it's accessed right this is of course going to be the object that was found and the object is the document so if we do found game dot title it's going to access the uh, title variable from that object okay so we'll just go ahead and change all of these hopefully guys you understand what's happening here it's actually very cool and it's a very um, cool little system that we just devised here um, it's way more simpler yet advanced so it's awesome okay so yeah, this should work theoretically, so let's go ahead and test this out. So if we reload here and click play game, it's not going to take us to this game. So if we click this to enable flash player, allow, nothing happens. Okay, so we have some problem here. Okay, so if we go back here. Okay, guys, so I found the problem here. It turns out that I accidentally typed the wrong uh, method here. So it's we don't have to change anything. All we have to do is actually just change the name of the ID, I mean of the method. So find by ID is the method I meant to type in. It's very similar to the find method, but it's actually different because what we're doing here is providing an ID and then it's going to search for that uh, for the document that's associated with that ID, okay? Okay, and also what we need to do is change, let's just get rid of these brackets here. We also need to change that because we're not using the find method, we're using just the find by, find by ID method. So we're only providing one little variable here as a parameter. So anyway, if we reload here, it's actually going to load the game now. So if we go to games and click any of these games, it'll load the game from the database. Well, from the information from the database, of course. Yeah, so that's really cool. As you can see here, it actually works. We, now we can retrieve data from these IDs whenever we, we provide one, right? With the find by ID method, okay? Let's just go ahead and add the third game for our little mini database so we can go ahead and delete it real quick. So I'll just move this over here and I'll start adding it. So uh, continue with T. Then we'll call it Glamager, and then 640 by 480, and continue with t.swf, hopefully I spelled that right, and then booty.png, okay? So that we'll submit that, I should add it to the database uh, successfully, um, and it did, awesome. So we see it right here. So if we click play game now, it actually takes us to this game, and now it loads. So as you can see, it's a very awesome system now. At this point, we can we basically fully automated the system. We can add games, you know, simply just by you know typing in the information. But the only problem is we um, have to we still have to manually add the files to our to our website here. So maybe next episode, or the, uh, one of the episodes after that, we're going to make it so we can whenever we click add game and add the information here, we can also provide the file in here so we don't have to go into the file structure every time and then add the file manually. Okay, so that's going to be a fun little thing we should do. It's going to make it even more advanced. So anyway, I hope you guys like this. Um, it was a pretty simple episode. We just used a simple method called find by ID, which allows you again to provide the ID and then gather the information associated with that ID. So anyway, if you have any questions about what we did, you can just leave a comment and, uh, and I'll help you. Or if you want to, you can also just look in the description for the Discord link. You could join our Discord server, hang out with us, ask questions, whatever you want to do. And finally, we have a link here for uh, all the codes from today's episode. So make sure you check it out. Make sure you um, bookmark it for future reference and all that fun stuff. So yeah, if you like this episode, leave a like. If you want to see more, subscribe and peace.